What up, Kings fans, and welcome back to On the King's Dime. It's the depths of the offseason still. There's still about a month and a little bit to go until the start of the season. Uh, preseason has ramped up. I've seen the guys in the gym already. That's great to see. There's one roster spot open, hoping for that new power forward signing, maybe. Uh, but don't worry, we've got you covered. We're going to bring you plenty of content all the way up until the start of the new season. Uh, the Gilles Luzada video dropped. Thank you to everyone who watched that. We really appreciate it. We had a blast making that. If you haven't watched that, obviously go back and look at that. Our first look at Dili Luzada, our new next star. From the Pelicans all the way to the Kings. I think he's going to be a fantastic signing. Watch him in the World Cup that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, now, Jay Sean Tate, this, this guy is going to be fantastic for this team. He's a fantastic, powerful guy. Came through the college hoop system in the US. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil too much of the video. You're going to see plenty of that. Boomers, boomer stuff. We're going to be bringing you boomers content. They took a massive L, a fat L in that game against Canada. Uh, bounced back, obviously, in the second game. The USA game, that was an ambitious idea from Basketball Australia. Look, they didn't execute it that well. It looked fantastic on the TV. A uh, few guys, not a few fans not happy, which is understandable. Uh, but Jock Landau, can we can we just get him into that power forward spot? Just sign him up, just slide him in there. I think ground he's playing. Don't let him go over to the, uh, the World Cup in China. Don't let him go back to Russia. Let's get him into that spot. Uh, but obviously, Jay Sean Tate, we're going to try and bring you some Will Weaver's offense in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not sure how he's going to build this. I think he's going to try and look at our team and this sort of fit it out for the FIBA regulation. I don't know if he's going to bring much stuff from the Long Island Nets down. Obviously, he's a, he's a good X's and O's coach, very good planner, a very deep thinker, almost to the point of being a little bit boring. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to go through some of that. We've got a podcast coming tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned. There's, there's heaps coming. We're going to try and go through that World Cup stuff. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe the video. We really appreciate you guys watching along. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned today. Jay Sean Tate. Enjoy the video, guys. So Jay Sean Tate, just from the YouTube clips alone, the thought of him dropping nuclear bombs at the rack inside of Kudos leaves us salivating in anticipation for the upcoming NBL season. Last season, the backup small forward option was next star Brian Bowen, and the Kings definitely lacked that versatility of having a guy who can defend up the chain and step out onto the perimeter. Bowen came with a lot of offensive promise, but was not known as a lockdown defender on the outside. From Tate's time in Europe, he looks ready to bring smart, versatile defense off the bench, as well as being a downhill scorer when not on the perimeter. If he accepts his role and he grows as a player, we think he can put himself in the shop window and return to the US and possibly the NBA. All eyes are on this young man and we're going to enjoy watching him take the next steps in his young career. Born October 28, 1995, Jay Sean Tate will turn 24 in the infancy of the new season. As a natural small forward, standing at 6'4 with shoes, weighing 214 pounds with a 6'8 wingspan, he played all four of his years in college at the Ohio State Buckeyes. In his first season as a freshman, he showed that he could score the ball with his solid frame and he could also grab rebounds, and it was enough to earn him a full-time starting spot on the roster, and he made 16 starts during the season, sometimes even starting as a small ball center. He'd go on to miss the final seven games of his first season with a shoulder injury, and after another year of growth in his sophomore season, Tate would lead the Buckeyes in scoring with 14.3 points per game in his junior year, taking the primary role on offense due to an injury to Keita Bates Diop. Some locker room trouble would lead to player unrest and thoughts of Tate quitting on the team in his junior season to play an Ohio State's football program. Despite some evidence that that could raise questions about his mentality, he returned to the basketball program with new coach Chris Holtman, where he would go on to become a significant figure on the court and leader for Ohio State. Captaining the Ohio team as a senior, he set a state record going 10 from 10 from the field against Northeastern in the 2017-18 season. He averaged 12.3 points per game and 6.2 rebounds per game as a senior on an NCAA tournament squad that finished 25-9. and As the number two seed in the Big Ten tournament, they lost to Penn State in the quarterfinals. They received an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament as the number five seed in the West region. They defeated South Dakota State 81-73 in the first round before losing to Gonzaga 84-90 in the second round. Overall, a successful college career where he averaged 28 minutes per game, 11.7 points per game and 6 rebounds per game. He would then declare for the 2018 draft and prepare for an NBA career. But things wouldn't go to plan for Tate as he went undrafted in the 2018 draft which would see his Ohio State teammate Keita Bates Job drafted at 48 for the Timberwolves. His 2018 Summer League aspirations would also be cut short by a finger injury. It was a story of what could have been for Tate, as he had shown enough promise to sneak his way onto last year's Bucks roster, especially as Sterling Brown, who was involved in the freak injury, made it all the way into a prominent position for the Bucks off the bench last season. 
Instead, he chose to sign a contract in Belgium with the Telenet Antwerp Giants. Tate followed fellow Americans Jason Clark, Tyler Kalinowski and Paris Lee and will find a home as a glue guy off the bench in a talented team. In the 2018-19 season, Antwerp would have its most successful season in its history. In European competition, he qualified for the BCL after advancing past the qualifying rounds. Antwerp was the surprise of the BCL season and the team beat Messia and Nizhny Novgorod in the round of 16 and quarterfinals. He qualified for the final four which was hosted in the city of Antwerp. In the semi-finals, Antwerp lost to Tenerife and it won the third place game over Bros Bamberg. Domestically, Antwerp won the Belgian Basketball Cup for the first time in 12 years. In the PBL, Antwerp lost to powerhouse Oostend who went to their 8th straight championship. Tate finished the season as a Belgian league all-star, averaging 23 minutes per game, shooting 56.5% from the field, with 43% from three, but on small volumes. He would show his ability to get from the corner to the basket, pass out of drives, and knock down the odd wide open three. He'd have been an absolute monster in Gaze's system off the bench last year. After some promising minutes in Summer League, that leaves him with the move to the Kings, the platform to showcase himself with more and more eyes as the Aussie League begins this season. In Will Weaver's own words, Tate is described as the ultimate teammate with an elite character, one of those guys who's the favourite teammate of everyone that they spoke to, including Europe and Ohio State. He plays hard with a wide range of skills, he's capable of driving on bigger guys and posting smaller guys, and is a warrior on the glass and he plays much bigger than he is. So where's he going to fit on this team? Off the bench for Brad Newley will undoubtedly be his first assignment. Newley's drive and score game being one off if not the best in the league, he's going to have an avenue to continue that scoring punch in the lanes that Newley creates while playing with the starting guys. The second unit with Didi Luzada and Jay Sean Tate is going to be defensively relentless. Two guys who have shown the ability to lock down the perimeter and Tate's ability to play up even higher in the forward positions makes him an intriguing prospect in a small ball scenario. He's going to have downhill lanes to the rack the entire time he's on the court and he's going to be a serviceable beast on the perimeter and if he knocks down a couple of threes here and there, he's going to be a fantastic piece for this team and really integrate with what Will Weaver is trying to build at the Sydney Kings. He's an exciting prospect for sure, but he does come with some baggage. One worry and on the court question mark is that he was not picked up by an NBA franchise in the draft after having quite a high profile and talented history of high school and college hoops. In his personal life, after tragically losing his mother who was murdered when Tate was only 9 years old, he has shown a mental resilience to grow and move on from such a tragedy and keep his mind focused on the court. It's widely known that he's undergone anger management and counselling, but his peers have still regarded him as a leader with a strong mentality. So maybe the NBA needs to see that his off-court growth needs to align with what he's doing on the court before they take the next step and sign him. He's had the perfect opportunity in Belgium to learn and grow as a player away from the spotlight of the NBA and as we turn the page, his King's chapter is only just beginning. We're definitely looking forward with the intrigue to what his talents can bring to this team. And that's Jay Sean Tate, simple and effective on the perimeter with a focus and determination that's well revered on the court mixed with frightening potential for powerful forward play. Defenses will have to keep their eyes on the lanes and keep their spacing tight or Tate is going to destroy the rack time and time again. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Sydney Kings content. And we'll see you guys next time on the King's Dime.